episode eight, a lot happened and we have a lot to talk about. And if you haven't watched it yet, make sure you go watch it first before watching this video because this will be full of spoilers. We are going to go over the entire episode. At the beginning of the episode, I knew Blackthorn was going to end up staying. And I think that's how Mariko and him will end up being together. But we'll get back to that in a second. One of my biggest predictions was that Toronaga was going to go soft after his son died. And it came true. But kind of. We learn what happens at the end of the episode. It's all a part of his plan. But man, is he making some huge sacrifices in order to sell it. All the things that his men do and the protests that they do, trying to show Tonanaga that they still want to fight, he dismisses it all. And he fools, he has to fool everybody. But we'll also get to that later on because there's a lot to talk about with that, especially after what they said in the episode eight podcast. But first, I do want to talk about Mariko's very sad story with her husband, Buntado. This time, she was very openly blunt. And very harsh with him this time when he offers that they both die together, which was pretty pathetic. But he's a heartbroken man. But he was also a douchebag when he was abusing her and she ended up dreading him. Apparently there were better times in their relationship, but he did this to himself and I'm glad she finally spoke her mind. It just sucks that he just tried to do this nice little sweet thing and tried to fix their relationship but it was way, way too late for that. So in the end, he ends up getting dookied on, rightfully so. He can't blame anyone but himself. All he has to do is just move on. The acting in that scene was great. You can really feel the tension and the dialogue is really, really smooth. It, it flows so nicely. You actually feel the sorrow that Bentado feels and the regret that he feels probably for making this woman's life so miserable. And before Blackthorn went to see his men again, I made some predictions while watching this episode. And here's what my predictions were. First, he's going to see the way they act as barbarians because he's been adopted and he's adapted to this new lifestyle. I mean, we can already hear them screaming and being loud when he's walking up to the door and the guy's already complaining, man, I can't wait for you to get these dudes out of here. This whole village will be happy when they're gone. I thought they were going to make fun of him for being dressed properly and behaving appropriately. But not really. He just really meets one of his crewmates. He's also been bathing a lot more apparently because he can smell probably what he smelled like when he was walking up to their uh, little camp. Then we see the courtesans get they land. It's this There's this huge flat landscape that the courtesans get and the Catholics got land right next to it. And I wonder if Toronaga gave them that land on purpose because he seemed like he was doing a genuinely good thing for him. Then he ends up putting next to the courtesan's new land that they get and he's definitely offended by that. So I wonder if Toronaga did that on purpose or not and what's the purpose behind that? Because we all know he's a very calculated man. And now we have to talk about the very intense scene when Toronaga and all his generals meet and he wants them to sign to say that they won't start a war and they'll be by his side the entire time, basically saying that they won't cause any trouble. There's this very intense argument with Toda Hiramatsu, who is Toranaga's right-hand man, and all the generals. They're really trying to convince him, and it just seems like Toranaga is being so hard-headed. And during this time, I was like, man, please let Toranaga have a plan, because this seems out of character for him. But at the same time, he's lost his son and a lot of other things, so... Maybe he's really given up, but I just know in the back of my head he has to have a plan, but they really sell it when his right-hand man gets his head chopped off and commits seppuku for Toronaga, and I'm like, wow, this is insane. The scene was so tense and emotional. I really didn't expect that to happen, nor did I want that to happen. I thought, will Toronaga give in at all? Like, come on, this is your, this is your best friend right here for your entire life. Do you not hear the words that he is saying? And they do the unthinkable and it actually happens. This show is legit, man. But I was so relieved at the end to see that Toronaga had a plan. And man, what a great performance did he put on. And after watching the episode recap, we learned that it wasn't completely intentional for his right-hand man, Toda, to be killed. Toronaga knew that one of his generals would want to commit seppuku in order to try to convince him and this would help him be more legit to everyone he's at war with and Toranaga did not expect Toda to be the one to do it 
But Toda only did it because he wanted to spare the other generals' lives. And they don't really like convey that really well, but that's what they said in the episode 8 podcast. Toda wanted to spare their lives so that they didn't have to do it. Because Todanaga knew somebody was going to do it. And it was all going to go towards the cause. And sell this belief that Todanaga has given up. So it was all a part of Todanaga's plan. But it wasn't a part of his plan for Toda to commit seppuku. But either way, it was still going to be a great loss to his cause for one of his generals to die. So not only did Buntado now lose his wife, he also lost his father and had to cut his own head off. Man, oh man, I wonder what that dude is going to end up doing in the next episode or two. So Blackthorn, understandably so, wants to survive. He doesn't just want to die with Tonanaga. He's trying to find a way to survive, just like Yabushige. <laughs> and you know Yabushige is going to look out for his own survival. <laughs> and Tonanaga really predicted that they were all going to do this. He predicted everything from the start. What a well-calculated man. He knew that Yabushige was going to betray him and trade on him and try to find safety somewhere else so that he doesn't die. And he knew that Blackthorn was going to try to get out of there because he also doesn't want to die. But Blackthorn didn't really owe him anything. So you can't really blame him for wanting to get out of somewhere that's not even his own culture and want to survive. And Yabushige has shown that this is one of his traits throughout the entire show that, yes, he wants to survive. He does not give a piss. If it comes down to him living, he's going to do what he needs to do. And can you really blame him? But it is really crazy to see what Todonaga is willing to sacrifice for victory. And the next episode is called Crimson Sky. So I think he's going to put his full plan into effect and he's going to win this thing. We got two more episodes left, and I, I can't be any more excited for it. Then we get that very good scene at the very end of the episode where Todonaga is sort of open and emotional slightly. We get that one-on-one -on -one scene with him, and it shows that he's trying to be as positive as possible and thinks of all his losses as opportunities, and he's very grateful for them and the people that provided them meaning his son and Toda. He won't let their names die in vain. And that is everything I thought about episode eight. What a great episode. Of course, one, one last thing, the shots, the direction, the uh, cinematography, everything is perfect, beautiful, uh, always on point every episode. I just got to make sure I say that every time. But I will see you guys on the next episode review. Peace.